You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good day. Dobry den, as they say in the Czech Republic, or ahoy, which literally means hello. And welcome to another episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you guys for hanging out with us in this episode number 597. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I think we have another question that will interest a lot of you. Maybe not everybody, but I think a lot of you have been uh, curious about this subject. And how to make the most of having a helper when you're out flying. Kind of deal. Having a visual observer. Albeit the FAA says they're not required, but we're going to give you some reasons why you probably should have one and is the focus of today's question, which is brought to you by Charky. If you love being on the go, you love being outside, you love being outdoors, check out Charky. Why? Because it's simply better than beef jerky. It's got more protein, lower in cholesterol than beef. It's grass fed and it is preservative free and simply the taste will surprise you. So check it out charky.website or just search for it on Amazon. Go to amazon.com and search C-H-A-R-K-I. Hey guys, this is Chris from New England Sky Solutions in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Passed my uh, 107 exam uh, two weeks ago. Super thrilled about that. Um, One of the things I wanted to ask about, I haven't been able to find a podcast on it, so maybe it happened a little while ago, uh, or maybe I just missed it, was about using spotters and VOs. you know, I'm thinking about in particular doing roof inspections for like a condo complex. We've got about a 24 acre site, pretty flat ground, a couple of different buildings, something like that. You know, would I need a spotter for it? Or basically, I guess as a, as a guide rule, do you have a size of a job where you bring in a spotter? And then, um, you know, how much you usually pay those guys? And is there overhead as far as when do I got to give them a, a 1099 or, uh, you know, the different uh, things that come with working with a spotter um, or uh, or a VO. You know, I want to make sure I'm flying safe, but I also want to make sure that I can offer a competitive price um, and, you know, not have to uh, deal with guys not showing up or, um, you know, finding uh, reliable help. Um, thanks very much. Love the podcast. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you very much for the question. And guys, don't forget, if you have a question, astronew.com, like you heard today, whatever you're thinking somebody else is probably wondering about as well. So don't be shy. Get I'm, that waiting, I'm waiting for the juicy questions. There's so many juicy What's questions. What's an example of a juicy question? I want to hear one in your mind with a juicy question. Juicy question. Like. Juicy question. I don't know. Ilker and I came up with a few on our really? way back from Colorado. I was like, man, I just wish someone would ask this question on the podcast. And now I'm totally drawing a blank. <laughs> I well, think- you, should have, you should have been calling from the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember one of them because for a while I said on the podcast, the Inspire 2 didn't have 360 degree rotational control on mm. the app. Mm-hmm. It's a specific setting. And they changed the setting on tilt wheel speed. It doesn't say tilt wheel speed. It says some other stupid engineering term that no one would think of. Trying to sound smarter. It was like tilt pitch something like acceleration it was just like what so anyway Hmm. yeah there's just so much more to that bird but uh okay let's talk about vo's why should you have a vo here's a perfect example and a story from florida from our good friend copter bill flying his drone with a friend in fact the friend was actually flying copter bill's watching and they're flying pretty far away Arguably beyond visual line of sight, but we're not here possibly to argue semantics. Nor do we know how good their sight is or how big the drone was something a lot of people don't ever bring up about beyond visual line of sight. Anyway, (laughs) there is an equation, by the way, for distance versus size. So anyway, (laughs) not going to go there. Darn. (laughs) Um, But anyway, they're flying along. And they're both looking at, you know, one's looking at the screen, one's looking at the drone. And then he goes back looking at the screen. You guys know how it is. Anyway, out of nowhere, <laughs> this hawk comes wow. in well done. And, <laughs> and grabs that drone and, and takes it out of the sky. Wow. Right? And, and but, Bill's looking at the screen. Copter Bill's looking at the screen. Other guy's looking at the screen. And if they would have just had one guy watching the drone the entire time, not just back and forth, but the entire time, they would have saw that hawk 
coming up from behind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and buzzed right on out of there. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. Um, if so, ever there was a case for a spotter, that is it. That is it. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> With drones, you really don't know the possibilities. That's so. funny. That's pretty funny. Anyway, I could give you 10 reasons why to have a spotter <laughs> from my personal experience. <laughs> Wait, nine of which we can't share on the air? Is that what you're <laughs> we saying? Can't share all okay. 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, how much do you pay spotters? Well, um, in regards to our last podcast, uh, when you're talking about um, setting up pricing for being on set, you normally have what's called the kit rental, which is 10% of the price of your entire equipment because productions pay for that. Then they pay your rate per day. Then they normally pay a labor rate. That labor rate is normally the cost uh, for your VO. So if you're flying on set, the set will pay the extra additional cost to your VO. If you are a personal production, like uh, let's take my personal production, and I wanted to hire Ilker, or if I wanted to hire someone else, you know, we normally pay camera people anywhere from 250 to 500 a day on projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for a VO, I would probably pay like 250 a day just because, you know, they're there, they're helping you, they're assisting, they're communicating. Um, that's on a pretty big job in which you're probably charging. That's if I'm out there all day. You're out there all day and you're probably charging five grand a day. No, no, three no, no. grand a day. Probably like two grand a day. Two to mm-hmm. three. Okay. Yeah. So it depends, you know, I right. know I forget what Vic pays Tom, um, his VO guy. They've been working together for a very long time. But uh, it really just depends on your relationship and what services they provide. Because what if, for example, Ilker and I are out filming and he's being VO and he's helping me get set up. And then all of a sudden he's shooting something for the vlog. You know? Sure. Yeah. So then you're adding different layers on to what they're being paid. Probably also their ability to fly. Because sometimes I would imagine they have their own controller. Well, and that... So you got to differentiate from a camera op and a VO because your VO cannot have his hands on any sticks. If he's going to be a VO, the only thing he should have in his hands is maybe a pair of binoculars as a point of extra safety. Now, the FAA says that your VO is supposed to have unaided vision, Mm -hmm. but let's be honest, it's not going to hurt to have binoculars there. So don't fall back on having binoculars, meaning fly so far away you can't see the drone without the binoculars. I'm saying that you should just have binoculars as a backup. So you can see the hawk coming. <laughs> yes, that okay. is true. So, so is there any significant, if any, distinction between a VO and a spotter? Are they no. effective that's synonymous? Visual observer and spotter. Right. We could have an abonics class really quick. Let's do it. Okay. No, I don't think we should. No? I miss those. <laughs> I don't. They don't play those on the radio anymore, and they used to be so I funny. I wonder why. <laughs> Let me... <laughs> huh. They're funny, okay? No, Whether I, you're ma- whichever. I don't think it's a I, matter of funny or not funny. <laughs> I see it as making fun of both sides of the aisle, so that's why I think it's funny. Cool. Anyway, All right. so you call it a spotter, and I'm going to call it a visual observer, okay? <laughs> observer. That's your inner observer. George Bush. <laughs> observer. That was a little George Bush-esque, that accent. <sighs> Unintentionally. Don't, don't be a philosophizer here, Rob, <laughs> okay? Or a Hippocraticizer. You don't want to be that either. So give me a couple of examples of when you use a spotter. Using the bathroom in the morning. Oof, that poor soul. (laughs) That is unfortunate. (laughs) Everyone's probably scratching their head right now listening to this. I don't know that Uh, that's what they're doing. (laughs) They might be hitting the stop button. (laughs) Shaking their head. (laughs) Um, I try to use a visual observer now more so than not. Because I used to be all about the single man operation. And I think the FAA was even cognizant of that when they wrote the rules because having a VO is not required. Right. But I do recommend it, especially in urban environments, especially with a lot of people involved. And if you're filming events, don't go anywhere without one or two spotters. It may even be good to have a visual observer and like an assistant. Hmm. Okay. So. Yeah. Just remember, guys, you've got to train your spotters. You guys have got to talk about communication. So go out to the field and train. Go out and say, you know, one of the drills that I do with a lot of the students is I have them fly out to the middle of the field and I say, okay, face the drone towards us. Drone left. Right now. Go. Drone left. Okay. Pilot right. You have to be able to distinguish right there which way am I, which way am I moving the drone? What is my perception subject? 
meaning am I perceiving from myself or am I perceiving from the drone? Mm -hmm. So you have to set up these baseline communication factors with your VO right away because, you know, like, oh, who is it? I think it's, uh, oh, I'm forgetting who it was. I want to say it was Carrie, but it wasn't Carrie. It was someone in Colorado who said, you know what I do is our VOs, they tell us three Two, one. And at one, we have to stop. That we won't hit the tree, but we just have to let off the sticks. Hmm. That may work for photographers who are always flying in GPS, but for videographers and cinematographers, that's not going to work. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Because you're in attitude mode and that thing will just keep going, yeah, right? Just keep for going. the most case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. So, so they do you care if they can fly? I guess in kind of what you just described in mm -hmm. some of that testing and training that you're doing, they probably have better do a pretty good job on the sticks themselves. I would like them to have some familiarity, but it's not critical. Yeah. You, if anyone who's willing to learn is the perfect subject to learn anything. Sure. Makes sense. I think cool. so. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com, upload that question. If you haven't become a member, why not? Do you not like having fun? I'm going to leave you with that. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And you're going to go to thedroneu.com.